The Gemara on Daf Samaches Samit Beis here in Sanhedrin quotes a pasuk im Aim Laish Goel, which you'll see about two and a half lines, the last two lines on Samaches Amid Beis. And let's put that pasuk into its context in Bamidbar Parakei. We're talking about someone who demands money, we'll call him the plaintiff, from the defendant, accusing him of gzela, that he stole money from him. The defendant from his part, initially, at stage one, says, Ladam, I never stole anything, and he takes a shvur to that effect. And then at stage two, the nitba, meaning the defendant, confesses the crime of gzela. And the Torah says in such a case that the nitba, who now confesses that he stole, has to pay Karen v'chomesh, and he has to bring a carbon ashom. The Pesach says, so after his whole dog, the Gazan had taken a Shur Sheker, he has to pay Karen Chomesh, and he has to bring a Karban Asha. Now what happens is the plaintiff dies after the Gazan takes a Shur, and this plaintiff has no heirs. He has no Yarshin. So that now the Gazlan wants to return the Gzela and add another Chomesh. And in this case, the Torah says that since he has no, the person who, di uh, who died, meaning the Tobea, the, the Nigzal, has no Yarshin, the monies should be turned to the Kohen, should be paid to the Kohen. And then the Gemara goes into a whole discussion about how could it be that a Jew died without any heirs? And the Gemara on the top of Dab Samach Tes Omen Aleph speaks about a ger. A ger that died without any Yarshim. Meaning he has no children, he never got married, and so forth and so on. And the money, as we said before, has to be pay, paid by the Gazlan to to the Yarsh, to, to the uh, Kohen. The Amar Achmana, La Ish, Ish at Tatsarach Latsar Olav, in Yeshlo Golim in Lav, Katon, Ia Tatsarach Latsar Olav, the Adua She'en Lo Gol. So it means the following, that in a case of a katan, it's impossible for him to have children. So that when the Torah says that you have to check out and see who are the heirs, the Yarshim, that doesn't apply in the case of a katan. So if the Nixal was a Katan, then you don't have to look and search and see if he has any Yarshim. Again, we have to also add that he's a Ger, because otherwise his father and so forth and so forth the Yarshim, but we're talking about a Ger Katan, and the Yadu Hashem Lo Golim, the Karen V'chomish certainly has to be paid over to the Kohen, because the Kohen is not Moli. He cannot bear children. And therefore, for sure, for certain, he has no Yarshim. And the Gemara uses this as an objection to Rav Chizda, who seems to assume that a Katan could have Yarshim in the previous sugya here on Samaches Amin Beis. Now at this point in the discussion, we want to look at Tosvis, Dibra Maskil Katon Iatatsar Lachsar, etc. 
And we're going to try to identify a part of the Tosis which starts with the words, V'im Tomar Hechi Yischayev Adam Asham Al Gzelo. So let's see if we can identify that part of Tosis. Now, the way Tosis appears, it's got three levels. So we're in the middle level, and right before the end of the middle, middle level, that's the middle size wide lines, before it gets very wide on the bottom, you go up two lines, and it starts with the Toma. So let me know if you find the place. Yes. The Toma, Hech Yischayev Adam Asher Al Gzelo. Meaning, you're telling me that this Ger Karton has no Yarshim. If he would have had Yarshim, let's say he was a Karton but not a Ger, then there would be a payment of Karen Vachomish and a carbon Asham on the part of the Goslings. So Tos says, how is that possible? Tos is going to quote two Gemaras and Shas to prove that there's no Shvua to counter the Claim of a katan. And that's based in Hagozel Kama at the end of Maset the Baba Kama or in Parashvuas Adayonim in the middle of Maset the Shvuas. On a Jrasha, Mirechsiv, the Pasik says, Ki yitain ish. And the Gemara Dashins, the Ein Nesinas Katan Klum. So the parsha of Shmua in Dine Toen Vinitan opens with the words Kiyitain Ish, meaning a guttle who's called an Ish in the Torah's language gave over an object to another guttle to watch and there was a certain denial on the part of the other guttle, and therefore he has to take the shmur. But it's got to be ish. And the word kiitain excludes a katar. And that gives us the principle called ein nishboi and altainas katar. So how do we reconcile our Gemara here in Masech the Sanhedrin with those two sukkis and shas that established that English Bonal Titus Katan. The Eshlomar's Tosis answers the honey mealy. When do we apply this principle of English Bonal Titus Katan? Bitainas Kfira Voda. That's the parish of Modem Mixas, where the Katan is claiming X from the defendant from the nitpa, and the nitpa denies part of X and confesses the other part. And in this case, he's not chayav a shvuas modu v'miksas. Avol al pi el echad, if let's say the cotton brings evidence of one witness, and we have our locha on a derisal level that el echad is mechayav shvua nishboim, the defendant, the nitpa, would have to take a shvua to contradict the testimony of one aid. Lahakish is the aid. And this is the opinion of Tosvis that in a case of Haodas Eid Echad, Nishboyan Altainas Kotor. 
Inami Tos gives another answer, but Kofetz Vinishba. That even though Bezdin cannot force the defendant and compel him to take the Shmur, because it was only a tain of a katan, nevertheless, the defendant jumped ahead and he took the Shmur on his own initiative. And now he's admitting and confessing that the Shmur that he took was a plagiarized Shmur, was a Shmur Sheker, and he has to bring a Karmanashim. So Tosus now is postulating a fundamental distinction between Shvuas Eidechad and Shvuas Modu Mixas. What generates the Chi of Shvua? In the case of Modu Mixas, it's the Taina. And therefore, if it's the Taina of a Katan, then there's no Shvuas Modu Mixas. For example, we require in Modu Mixas a minimum of a Taina of Shte Kesa. Now, why is that so? The shear of Mammon in Kalatar Kula, the minimum amount of Mammon is a pruta. And yet, with regard to the Shmur of Modem Mitzas, we need a minimum of Shtei Kesem. Why in Shmur is Modem Mitzas? Is the Shmur not Chal unless the Shtei Kesem? And the answer is because the Shtei Kesem requirement is a precondition in the Halosh Shem Taina. You can only have a taina if it's a taina of shtei kesef, and that's going to be mechayev v'shvuas modu v'miktas. So again, just to summarize, in the case of modu v'miktas, what generates the chiyav shvua? It's the taina. And in the case of a katan, ein tainas katan mechayev v'shvua. However, in the case of eid echad, a shvua is chal even on a pruta. So that the taina here was you owe me a pruta. He supports his taina with a, a testimony of one aid, and the nitba has to take a shmur. What do we see? It's not the taina that generates the shmur. If it were so, then you would require a minimum of a taina shtei kesa. Why is a taina of a pruta enough? Because the answer is it's the ha'adas eid echa that generates the shmur. And now we get to the case of a katan. In the case of a katan who's tobeah, then there's no shvu of modu mixas on the tide of a kata because tainus kata is not considered a taina lechayv shvu. But in the case of ed echad, who's mechayv shvu because of the edus of the aid, even though the tviya and the taina is that of a kata, it doesn't matter because the kata has mamon. The ed echad is coming to support the kata, and he's mechayv shvu because of his testimony. So the shvu is not a result of the taina. But rather result in the other seidecha, and therefore, in the case of a katan, if the katan has the support of the evidence of one aid, then there will be a shvua, and that's not a violation of the principle of aim nishvan al tainus katan, because the shvua here, in the case of eidechad, emerges and is generated by the testimony of the eidechad, but not by the tain of the katan. <coughs> Now, this could have a tremendous nafkimina with regard to a taina shema. What does it mean? Let's say I lent you money, and I don't know whether you paid me back or not. In such a case, I cannot be mechaib yushvua because a taina shema is not considered a taina. But if, let's say, an eid echad, would come and testify that you owe me this money, you would have to take a shmur to be makish, the aid, because we don't need my taina to be makish to, to generate the shmur. The aid echa generates the shmur. And that's what Rabbi Ephraim says in the rush in the Sech the Shmurs, he quotes two shitas in the Rishonim. One sheet is the riff, and the riff says that an Eidechad is Mechayev Shvua, even if the Taina is only a Taina Shema. And Rabbi Ephraim says, no, the Eidechad is not Mechayev Shvua unless there's a Taina, meaning a Taina is buried. 
So we see that fundamentally there are two views on the question of Eid Echad in Shmur. What's Machayev the Shmur? Is the Eid Echad supporting the Taina? And the Taina is now Machayev Shmur? Or forget about the Taina. It could be a Taina Shema, it could be a Taina Katan. The Eid Echad himself, by virtue of the power invested in his Eidus, he is Machayev Shmur. And that's a machlokis between the Rif and Rabbeinu Ephraim. Rabbeinu Ephraim holds that the Eid Echad is only supporting the Taina of the, of the Tobea. It's got to be a Taina's Bari. Otherwise, there's no Chiyav Shmua. And the Rif says, no, I couldn't care less. Even if the Taina is a Taina Shema, there will be a Chiyav Shmua to be Makhish the Eid Echad because the Eid Echad himself generates the Shmua even without Taina. And as we said before, the Nachdimini would be a Katan. If, let's say, a Katan brings an Eid Echad to support his claim, Tosas here says that in that case there would be a shvur requirement on the part of the Gazan to be makhish the Eid Echad. And that reflects the sheet of the Rif, that even though ain't tainus katan klum or ain't tainus shema klum, nevertheless the Eid Echad is makhish the shvur on his own, inherent in the power of his Eidus. And now we're going to see that this whole issue is a machlokas between the Ramam and the Raivin Tartal and Milchus Zela Halacha Yud Gimel. Now, if you have the Masifta, he quotes a Rambam here in the footnote, numbered Chavdalin, in Hilchus Toen Venitan. Where is this Rambam? Perek Hei Halochetes of Toin Venitan. And the Rambam says that even in the case where the Eid Echol is supporting the claim of the Katan, Still a nishboim lekotan. And what that means basically is that the Ramam accepts the sheet of Rabbeinu Ephraim. That the Shvua Seid Echad is based on the Taina. And in the case of a Katan, his Taina could not generate a Shvua. And Rabbeinu Ephraim applies that to the case of a Taina Shema. Taina Shema could not be Mechai Veshvur, even in the case of Eid Echad. Now let me read to you a different Rambam, not the one that's quoted here in Perik Hei Milchus Toim Venitan, but the Rambam in Perik Dalid Mi Hilchus Gzei Veda Halacha Yid Gimel. The Rambam writes, V'chein Im Hoyesham Eid Echad, Bilbad, Shalomakhishatora <laughs> So let's try to summarize the Rambam in the fourth chapter of Hilchis Zela. There was only one witness to support the claim of the Balabayas that that this object is stolen.
You know what? Give me a minute. I want to just take out the Rambam. It's always a good idea to see the Rambam inside. Eric Dalit, Allah Yud Gimel. So what, what, what was the testimony of the A? The witness testimony testifies that he saw so-and-so enter into the house of his friend, and the Balabais was not there, and so-and-so walked out of the bias holding a clue. And Abal Bais is claiming that that kli is stolen. And the accused Goslin says, no, I bought it. I collected it as a chov. Or it was mine and only was it a picada that I gave you to watch on my behalf. So the Rambam says that in this case, he has to return the kli. Without a shmur. If there would have been two Adim, he would have to pay. The Achshav Shein Shav Ela Edechod, Chai Shmur Ve'ni Yochel Yishav Asher Edo Machish Ze'ed. The Ed is claiming that he entered into the house of his friend and walked out with a clue. And the defendant is not denying what the aide says. He admits exactly to the testimony of the aide that he went into his friend's house and walked out with a clue. It's just he says that was my clue. He's not willing to admit that he stole the clue. So in this case, he's obligated to shmur, but he's a mechui of shmua, ve'ni yochel ishava, is mishalim. Ramam adds Lefichach im Kafar Vyom Alonichnasti Lebeis of Lonatalti Kalim Choil the Ancient Melade Echad of Umakrisha Reza Nishbashua Satorish or Lokach Mi Beiso Klum the Nifta. And now the Ravid says the following Omar of Ramzet Tema Me Achashabal Bais Lo Hoyasham. Ech yeshkan tainus bari kedeshe ze yem achu yeshvua v'enu yochel ishama. The rabbi says that the taina against the so-called accused gazlan is a taina shema. So how could the edecha generate a chiyuv shvua? The Ulai Nomar Akashim Tse Enu Biyodo Tainis Bari. Maybe you'll say he does have a Tainis Bari. Afal Pishalo Rosh Al Tsio Mi Beso. He didn't see him when he actually went into his house and took out the Kli. El Sha'id Meid. Mikolako Mikol Zad Din. Gon Cholik Olo.
In any event, let's just see if we can summarize. The Rambam holds that even though the Toveya has a kind of Shema, right, he doesn't know if the guy entered into his house and took out a kli. Nevertheless, the Rambam says there's a Chalo Shmur, a Shmur Zayd Echad. The Rambam says no. Shmur Zayd Echad requires a Tainas Bari. So in other words, the Rambam is holding that the Machayim of the Shvua is the Ha'odas Ha'ev. And that could be Chal even with the Taina Shema. The Raivet holds no. The Taina generates the Shvua Seid Echad. And if a Taina was only a Taina Shema, it cannot generate a of Shvua. You need a Taina's Bari. So just to summarize, our tosis that says that you can have a case of a katan and there's a shvur that's generated by eight echad, our tosis is maintaining that it's the eight echad that generates the shvur, and that's the shitas of Ramam, the shitas of Rif. The Rif says it with regard to a tiny shema, and the Ramam also a tiny shema. And therefore, we can apply it to a tainas katan, which is like a tainas shema, and in and of itself, it's not sufficient to generate a shvua, but the edechah could be machai of the shvua. The toast is holds like that, she said. And then we saw the raivet, and before him, Rabbeinu Ephraim, they were of the opinion, no, that the edechah could not generate a shvua, he could only support the taina of the plaintiff. And if the taina of the plaintiff can't generate the shvua, because he's a tainas shema or he's a katan, then Eid Echel is not going to generate a Chiyim Shvu. Now, we mentioned before that in the Masifta, he quotes a Rambam in Hilchus Toen Vinitan, Perik Hay, Halachates. And there the Ramam says, A Nishba and Al Tainas Katan. So now the Ramam is contradicting himself because we saw the Ramam in Ilkhis Zela that even though the Tainas is Tainas Shema, there would be a Shvua Seid Echon. But in the case of a Katan, the Ramam says, A Nishba and Al Tainas Katan. So what we have to do, not for today, but another time, is to go through the Rama Minhilfis Toin Minitan and see if we can come to some resolution of what seems to be a contradiction in the Rama. Does the Rama maintain that the Shru is generated by the Erechud and not by the Taino? And that's the Rama Minhilfis Zela, Perik Dalit, but the Rama Minhilfis Toin Minitan Perik says, Anish Boinal. Tainas Katan, and he's talking about a case of Eid Echad. And why not? Why can't the Eid Echad himself generate a Chiyuv, a Chiyuv Shvur? So that's going to be, you know, some sort of a, shall we say, a challenge to try to reconcile these two, these two Rama. You know, I'm thinking to myself that in the case in Hilchus Gzela, the Rambam is talking about a Gadol who could have a Tainas Bari, and Eidechon is telling him he should have a Tainas Bari because Eidechon witnessed the guy going into his house and walking out with a Kli. That's a little bit different than the case where an Eidechad is supporting a tain of a katan who's completely mufka from Chiv Shmur, from being Mechayv Shmur. By the way, Tosis gives another possibility of Kofetz v'nishba. And then afterwards he admits that he took a Shmur Sheket and he brings a Karmanosham. 
But that's a different case. I mean, that's clear that everyone would agree. Okay, then. So thank you for your patience. And, uh, and we kept our time limitations and have a great day.